Hey guys, Omni here. I have been waiting all day to get home and check out this trailer. So we got our latest look at the Snyder Cut, or as this is calling it, the Justice League Director's Cut. Um, another official teaser update is what it says. So I'm curious to see if we've got some new footage in here, if, the, if this is just a re-upload of what was before. I know Snyder had like a Us United little reveal and event and commentary and breakdown that I just completely missed out on because I have a normal job, <laughs> but we're going to check this out and I can't wait. I am excited. Here we go. Oh, that is so nice. I don't know. This is a better quality than the last one I remember seeing. Uh, <laughs> that's that's what that is. What are they doing? <laughs> Looks like mostly the same stuff with some new footage intermingled in between. The sod. Now I've heard some uh, interesting feedback on uh, the new Steppenwolf design. Dude, I cannot wait to see what that's all about. Hashtag the Snyder Cut. I love that, man. I love it. Whew. So not, not a terrible amount of new things in there. Just some standout clips. Of course, we got a new, uh, another look at Steppenwolf. Um, I did see the, the high res images that I've seen of Steppenwolf and his upgrade or downgrade, depending on which side you're on. Um, there's some people like that really don't like the just the overly detailed chrome spiky knife pool that he's turned into. I've seen a couple of memes already about it. Uh, one in particular was the Knives Out logo with Daniel Craig sitting down and then it's just Steppenwolf behind him. All of the blades coming off of him. Um, I get it. I, I don't. <clears throat> it looks more interesting, I think, than the previous one. The, the previous one, even though I think it's a little more closer to the version in the comics a little bit, it's just kind of, it comes off very bland on screen the way they at least handled it. Though there's something about the chrome in the blades and the excessiveness of it. It is very excessive. The design, I can agree with that. And I, maybe it's because of how reflective and shiny they look. They look like they're a different, they're a completely different layer than his face. But they're still working on the film, so who knows? It might turn out looking a little more blended together in the final cut. Dark Side, though, in the beginning, or Uxus, in the beginning, looked fantastic. And then we've got a tease, a 
of what he's going to look like fully realized for this shirt that they're promoting for the Snyder Cut for charity, with shows him with the, you know, the more um, dark side kind of look and his Omega beams and such, and it looks fantastic. Of course, what we see in this trailer is just the young dark side that initially tried to attack the Earth at that point, known as Uxus. I think that's how you say it. It's U X A S. I think is the spelling. Um. But yeah, that's before he becomes the being known as Darkseid. And then we get, a, of course, our glimpse of Desaad. What is that? What was some of the new things that we saw in there? We see Cyborg overlooking some uh, kids playing and passing ball in the street. And of course, him being an ex-football player, now because of that accident, he can't pursue his dreams. He was pretty much set for life, at least with his scholarship in college, due to his um, his athleticism, and that's all taken away from him because of this, with a new destiny laid at his feet now. But seeing him like longingly look out of that at the people like playing the sport that he loved and devoted himself to, it, it, it's a little heartbreaking. Um, of course, we see that scene that gives uh, another view of the one that was not in the final version. Of course, we saw the flowing cape or whatever with Batman looking up at it. Uh, previously, but now we see like an alternative uh, perspective of that same scene, and we see the rest of the league is gathered around this table watching a, a hologram of Superman flying. I don't know what that alludes to, except maybe them like, okay, we need Superman if we're going to survive this or so I, something. I don't know. I don't know what that's going to kind of what that how that plays into it. Um, we saw a glimpse of um, Hippolyta fighting, uh, probably in this version of Steppenwolf's attack and assault to get the, the Amazonian's mother box. Um, curious to see if that sequence is going to vary other than a, a Steppenwolf's design and how much of that was what we, how much of what we saw is actually what Snyder envisioned. It's our, I know he said he did clarify because he did put put out this uh, statement that got its words twisted by the media saying that there will only be four minutes of new footage seen in this movie, which the way the trades were kind of um, talking about it made it seem like oh, only four minutes of this movie is going to be different from the theatrical version, which is how it was misleading people, which he went on to clarify heavily that those four minutes are sh stuff that he did not shoot himself before he left the project. Of course, that's new scenes that he wanted to do that he's wanted to add into it since then. And like I've said before, probably some scenes to kind of help it more cleanly fit into this four episode format that it's going to be in. However, further clarifying that over two hours and 30 minutes of this movie, nobody has seen. That's how much of this movie was left on the cutting room floor from his version. And of course, what we know from Zach when he gets into a, a passion project or one that he's really heavily devoted to, he overfilms to the point where the studio makes him cut things down. Of course, we've seen this with his other uh, director's cuts. So this will be his fully realized vision. Um, and of course, from what we've heard in some interviews, his evolved vision. So there's th some things that over the time that he's lived with this, uh, that he's like, well, I'd love to do this too in this. And, you know, it's kind of changed. It's evolved with him over the years as well from the little pieces and nuggets that I've kind of picked up on through his various interviews. I know some people are like, well, I want Zach's original vision, not this thing that he's adding in there now or something along those lines. I was like, it's still, that still makes it Zach's vision. I don't know. I'm sure there is some PR play going in there with some of the way that he's presenting this to us, clearly, because there's this weird relationship, this weird tug and pull between WB and him now because of the fan outcry and everything with the Snyder Cut movement. But in the end, I feel like this is going to be what Zach intended and whatever he intended to change with his story going forward. So I like that he's also talked about, these are some things we haven't talked about on the channel yet, that he's also talked about his ideas and plans of what's going forward. Of course, we know he had like a five movie kind of plan set up for how this was all supposed to be structured out. 
And if this, there's nothing in stone right now, but I, I'm willing to bet if this succeeds, and I've said this before, if depending on how this is received, how financially lucrative this, uh, turning this thing into a reality becomes, we might, he might get his own sequel to this. They might move on past this and let him complete his vision to fruition. So I'm excited. And this is coming from a person who initially wasn't fully on board the Snyder train in the beginning. I didn't initially like BVS. Over time, it's really grown on me. And I look, on, look back on it in a completely different light. And I think a lot of that came through some of you know, Zach's commentary himself, helping me understand what he was going for and kind of getting past that initial gut reaction to being like, these aren't the versions of the characters I know, and let, letting go and understanding that this is, like he says, it's his run. He knows this isn't like the traditional canon version of them. He treats this as if he's just another person picking up the pages and picking up the writing and just doing his iteration. Like, this is his take. And not every take, even in the comics, is something people gravitate to. There's different versions of every character, and thus exists the multiverse. Once I accepted that, that really like helped a lot. Plus, um, his explanations for a lot of it, and of course my own kind of growth over those years since that initial viewing did help ease up on it quite a bit. Um, though Man of Steel, I loved outright i like that so much when it came out i think it was really when i saw the handling of batman and just it was so jarring and different even though i love ben affleck and i think that's the closest we've gotten up to now of a comic accurate batman closest that we've gotten um i was still blown away by it like there was nothing that like long standingly destroyed my <laughs> love of the movie or this universe, but I still stuck it through, man. I love DC to death. And you know, this is a, this is an inspiring tale of just redemption for Zach. And I, I hope it pays out because I know the critical reception has not been great for his films. It's, it has been very torn. There are people that absolutely love them. And those are the ones that really campaigned to get this going. And there's, there's the people that just did not enjoy his vision, like from Man of Steel to BVS to this universe that he set up. There's people that just wasn't there. And then you they have people that, like me, who originally was in the middle, loved Man of Steel, was ended up really divided on BVS. Suicide Squad, though, was not the best movie. I still came out of it having an okay time. I wasn't blown away by it, but I wasn't like let down by it either. Um, and then Justice League, for what it was, until we learned the gut wrenching truth and the drama and everything behind the scenes that really makes you look on that movie in a whole different light. I was just happy at the time to see the Justice League in live action. I accepted it for what it was. And looking back on it, it does have its flaws. I did enjoy it. I do still enjoy it for that same reason. But knowing that he, there was a plan, there was a method to what I then saw back at the time to the madness of Zack Snyder and his brilliance, or seeming brilliance, however you look at it, whatever side of the camp you are on on this, you know, even if he doesn't always express it on film, he's got a brilliant mind. And I'll, I'll, I'll stand by that. And I, I want to see it to fruition because he seemed like he has some really good ideas. It's just the reviews, the reception to his universe initially gave Warner Brothers at the time great pause and they wanted to sh shift gears away from it. So it was like a the studio just didn't back him. They used a tragedy to usurp control away from it to get out this by the numbers corporate mess and potentially abuse their cast depending on who you believe I'm I don't know I'm not there but we've heard various reports from various people and of course one of those loudest voices right now Ray Fisher um and now 
Jason Momoa back in that. There's a lot of stuff surrounding these films that, I don't know, it's just, one day there's going to be an amazing documentary about all of this, and I can't wait to watch it. <laughs> anyway, guys, that kind of went off on its own little soapbox, so thank you guys for tuning in. I can't wait to see what this iteration brings. What are your guys' thoughts on this trailer, the, some of the new clips, the footage? What do you what do you actually think? What's your opinion, your stance on the new design for Steppenwolf? Sound out in the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below, and we'll carry on the conversation after the video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll catch you guys next time. Take care, everybody.